The coronavirus pandemic dealt a harsh blow to the automotive industry in 2020, but sales snapped back. Now the auto industry faces another huge problem, a shortage of chips essential for countless functions throughout cars, trucks, and SUVs. Companies in an array of industries are vying for the precious supply of microchips that are disproportionately produced by a small pool of manufacturers. Early in the pandemic, automakers cut production, and this is the resulting shortage. Chipmakers diverted their supply chains to feed industries not hit as hard by the stay-at-home orders that kept car buyers away from dealerships, and automakers are finding they have been pushed to the back of the line. Industry analysts say the shortage could cost around $60 billion for the industry as a whole. Some of the world's largest makers have cut production of even their most popular vehicles and said the crisis will hit their earnings. In the short term for the industry, there isn't a great way out. Modern cars are far more technologically complex than their forebears. Today's vehicles need chips for nearly everything. Engine control units, transmission control, brakes, steering, infotainment systems, and safety tech, such as sensors and backup cameras. It's not just that you're adding you know, big screens and you've got an electric car and that you have all these, these ADAS and collision avoidance features and Bluetooth and everything else. Things as conventional as the temperature sensor, right, that tells you what the temperature is outside, and your headlamps all have aspects of this. They have uh, computers running small modules that didn't exist 10, 15 years ago. Customers increasingly want cars that offer high-tech features that require complex hardware and software. There is a staggering number of chips in even the most rugged vehicles. There can be thousands of, of chips in a vehicle. It really depends on how highly contented it is. Early on in the pandemic, auto sales slowed dramatically. In March 2020, when stay-at-home measures began taking effect, new vehicle sales in the U.S. fell 38.4% compared to March 2019. The overall drop for the quarter, including the two previous months when customers were still mostly going about their lives, saw a more modest decline of 12.7% compared to Q1 of 2019. But soon after that, sales began to snap back. By May, sales were down just 30% over the same month in the previous year, and in June, by only 26.7%. Automakers have been setting up war rooms to evaluate how they can rectify the shortages or what engineering decisions they need to make to build as many of the most profitable vehicles they can. Different industries use different types of chips and the automotive sector has its own specific needs. Chips for cars need to be durable and long lasting. That means a lot of automotive industry chips are legacy chips, meaning they tend to be older designs. That's a problem for automakers. Those legacy chips aren't as profitable for the for the semiconductor industry. Um, so when they're balancing out, you know, who to provide chips for and, and who to maybe, you know, let wait a little bit, it's it, it, it's really, you know, a multitude of things that go into that decision making. Meanwhile, demand for consumer electronics, gaming consoles, televisions, phones and webcams exploded. The demand for consumer electronics, which uh, to a great degree used the same chips, the same types of chips, took up all of that additional slack. So you already had a shortage, you already had tight supply, um, you had automakers ramping down their orders while other competing industries ramped theirs up. And then when automotive came back a bit faster than expected, the capacity was not there to fill the demand. And so then it took a, a few months to really reach the coal face, which is a shortage at an auto plant. And that's what we're seeing now are, you know, the, the automakers are forced to uh, furlough workers and stop production on certain models. So chip makers were running into their own shortages due to production constraints and had begun prioritizing chips for other industries, often ones that are more profitable for them and less likely to have to cut back supplies in the event of a lockdown. It could cost the whole industry $60.6 .6 billion this year, according to Alex Partners. That's the full impact to the industry. And that, that's an estimate based on what was an early forecast. Um, we would say that number is still probably 
close to good. Um, it, it could be a little bit more uh, based on the way things have gone. If the automaker plant is down, all of the suppliers are not producing, not delivering and not selling parts. And so that number is spread out all the way across the global industry. General Motors expects the chip shortage will cut its earnings by $1.5 billion to $2 billion in 2021. Ford Motor Company is facing a similar hit in the same period, somewhere around $1 billion to $2.5 billion. It's hard to find an automaker that hasn't had to slow down or suspend production over the shortage. Honda called for temporary production halts at three Japanese plants in May. Nissan also called for stoppages in Japan and at three factories in North America. Automakers are cutting back production on some of their best-selling and most profitable models. That shows no product or company is spared. If supplies are tight, automakers likely push what materials they do have to the hottest vehicles. In America, the best sellers are full-size pickup trucks, and to be sure, Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis, formerly Fiat Chrysler, have all had to cut back production on their full-size pickup trucks. Signs like that suggest pretty much everyone is getting hit. Automakers that have access to chips are going to be the winners. Demand for vehicles was relatively strong in 2020 despite the pandemic. A lot of the vehicles sold were used ones, but new vehicle transaction prices were rather high, which industry insiders say is evidence consumers were buying pricier vehicles simply because that was what was available. Automakers were surprised when sales snapped back the way they did and were caught off guard when they couldn't secure what they needed. But the pandemic seems to have shined a light on a problem the industry had seen hints of before. There's only a few places in Taiwan that make these um, chips. The supply chain is dubious. So it may have just pushed us over the precipice that eventually we were going to hit. Automakers are several degrees removed from chip makers, and the supply chains can be opaque even to the companies within them. Fluctuations in demand at one end of the chain can spur a pretty big overcorrection at the other end, a bullwhip effect. So when automakers began cutting orders, it rippled out through all of the tiers of the supply chain. Another problem is that chips are not really interchangeable among different products or applications. From their earliest stages, they are custom built for certain needs. They aren't like some other materials, such as steel, where automakers can quickly pivot to another supplier. Car companies have suffered shortages of chips before, when there have been plant fires or natural disasters. The financial crisis of 2008 and 2009 created a similar effect on the automotive supply chain. Some more conventional automotive companies did invest in, in semiconductor manufacturing. Uh, they did vertically integrate a little bit because they some wanted the safety, some just wanted the experience. Uh, they wanted to know uh, a lot more about the design and manufacture of these. And so some automakers and suppliers actually do have their own fabs, their own wafer manufacturing, their own semiconductor manufacturing. It doesn't cover their entire demand, but it covered enough that they knew a bit more than some others, and, and those companies are, are better off today. In the short term, options are few. Automakers can either work with current suppliers or try to see where else they can get materials. You start to really look at where else you can get supply and, and maybe see if the current supplier can boost production or do special builds or, you know, you, you try to do everything you can to mitigate the situation. You try to start air shipping and, you know, all of these things to get the parts to the assembly line because it's better than shutting it down. Building out new manufacturing capacity will take months, if not years. But the industry is recognizing the need to rely less on the few producers currently in the world. Automotive supplier Bosch said in March it will open a chip factory in Dresden, Germany by June. The plant was already in construction before the supply shortage hit, and the chips that will be made there are not the same as those currently in short supply. But it is still a sign, say industry analysts, that the automotive world is trying to reduce its dependence on a small set of chip makers in one corner of the world. Europe has said, we're not going to be dependent on Taiwan anymore, we're going to make them ourselves. Vehicles are already stuffed with electronics through features like advanced driver assistance systems, robust infotainment equipment, and creature comforts like adjustable seats with customizable settings. The next generation of vehicles are likely to be even more tech-heavy. 
the direction of the automotive industry suggests chips will become an ever more important piece of the product.